Hi guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, I will show you how to model that tire with all these details. So let's jump into that tutorial. Let's start with the image plane or the reference image. Go to top view, press shift and V, back, select the image. First thing, I'm going to lower the resolution or scale. Let's make it 40. Also, I won't follow the exact shape of the reference image. It is just here for to give me an idea. Let's add a plane. Let's set the width 25 for the height. I think 6 is good, but make sure that you set your height an easy number to remember later, like 6. For the width and height segments, let's set the width 6. I want to change height. I'm going to make that plane invisible, press C. Delete that side because I'm going to use symmetry object. Let's push these like that. So I'm going to select these and move like that. Then I'm going to right click, select loop cut. Edit these loop cuts. Now let's switch to polygon mode. Select these polygons. Press Ctrl and Extrude. Let's put that object into a symmetry object. Press Alt, select symmetry. Also, let's see the lines. Before moving forward, I will make some extrudes. I will select these ones, press Ctrl. Also, let's move them on the X axis. Now let's select these polygons, but before doing extrude, I will delete these ones. Now I am going to make extrude. After that, I will delete these new polygons, switch the points mode, select these points and weld them with the weld tool. For these bottom edges, I will select them, right click, slide, also let's select these bottom edges, press Ctrl, Exit. Now it is time to use loners, select symmetry. Press Alt, click on Cloner Object. I'm going to change the mode linear because I want to clone on the Z-axis linearly. So let's set the Y to 0 and let's increase the Z. And if you remember, our plane's height was 6 centimeters. So let's put here. So we will get a perfect match between the objects. I'm going to make the counts. 50. Let's switch the top view. I will turn off that image plane because I am not going to use that anymore. What I'm going to use is Band Deformer. Select Band Deformer. Change the size. But before changing the size, let's see which way the Band Deformer bends. So this is the wrong way. First, let's rotate it 90 degrees. Press Shift. So it's going to snap. Check that one more time. I need to rotate it one more time. 90 degrees. Let's check that. Yes, now this is the correct way. I'm gonna put the strength back to zero. Go to top view. Now I will change the size. But don't change the size with the scale tool. Just use these options.
also you don't have to be too precise with that scaling process it doesn't have to be too accurate now I am going to put a null to the scene put these two objects in that null so the band deformer could band that cloner let's try that so that 360 is not enough but we can increase the strength above 360 so 378 looks like the perfect but if it isn't perfect the match something like let's say that you got something like that we can always fix that just put the null under the connect object then increase the tolerance or threshold just like that Okay, I'm gonna set it back to uh, 378. Set the tolerance to default, then make the connect objects editable. Let's change the center axis of that object. Go to mesh, axis, axis center, execute. After that, coordinates the world. Set the y and z to zero. So let's rename that. Now let's add an FFT deformer. Press Shift. Select FFT. This is gonna make the FFT child of the tiger. First thing I want to select these middle points. Switch to scale and scale this. After that, I will select them all. Control A. Extrude them. Uh, sorry, scale them on the X axis. If you are happy with your shape, you can right click on your object, say current state the object, then you can delete the tire with FFT. So now let's select these inner edges, press Ctrl and extrude. Maybe we can scale a little bit. Then I'm gonna select loop cut, press Shift. So it's gonna snap. Let's make these cuts right in the middle. Now I will select these near edges, scale them on the x axis. Also, let's not forget to extrude these ones. Select them, press Ctrl, scale. Let's put that tire under a subdivision surface because we will want smooth edges. Press Alt, select subdivision surface. First thing, I'm gonna get rid of that shading error, normal error. So turn off use edge breaks. Also, I want sharper edges. To do that, I will use Bevel Deformer. Let's turn that subdivision surface off for now. Also, I'm going to enable line lines. I will press Shift, select Bevel Deformer. So the first thing I need to do, decrease the offset. Let's make it 0.2 or 0.3. I will also increase my subdivision to 1. Alright, that looks okay, but I want to increase the range of the bevels. So I want the bevels to be here too, to follow that edge flow. To do that, I will decrease my angle threshold. Let's make it 25, 24. Yes, 23 is the perfect number for me. Now 
but I don't want these center edges to be sharp. To do that, let's turn off bevel. Select these ones. I will bevel them, right click, select bevel with one subdivision. So let's turn that bevel off on. So now it's okay because I kind of decrease the angle of that edge with bevel. Also, I will enable subdivision surface. Perfect. But if you want, you can either use that tire with subdivision surface or you can turn this off and you can move on with the bevel deformer. It is up to you. Now let's try to add more details to that tire. So if you are familiar with these tires, they got these kind of bumps. I found something like that in the internet for the texture. I will put the link in the description so you can download that. So let's try to use that image as a bump. So first thing we need to do, unwrap that tire. Let's switch our layout to UV edit. First thing, I will select these polygons with the loop selection tool. We select loop selection or you can use the shortcut U and L. So this is the important polygons for me because I will use the frontal projection for these polygons. So let's go to right view. Put projection and say frontal. I will turn off bevel so it's going to be faster. Now I will make the same selection. This time I'm going to make it left frontal. But since we are not going to see that side of the tire i will just put it right here then i'm going to select them all after that i am going to invert the selection u and i and move these outside of the uv box select them back and say fit uv to canvas Now I will invert the selection, U and I, and say UV unwrap. It's not a perfect job, but it's going to get the job done. After that, I will pack these polygons, select bonding box, hit apply. I will scale them and put them inside. Now we can switch to paint, 3D paint change your layout so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to enable my wizard select the object next don't click recalculate uv because we have just done that next enable on the bump set your resolution then say finish so this is our material let's put the color to 50 gray for the bomb I'm gonna increase that to 50 so now I can paint my bump map but we are not gonna paint I will use that bump texture I have showed you so first thing let's load that image I will select it all ctrl c then go to texture then go to bump, go to layers and paste that over. So the first thing we need to do is scale that texture. Select this tool, scale tool. And I am going to try to fit that image. All right, now let's go to 3D view. Also, I'm going to enable bevel and subdivision surface. But I think I want to scale that texture.
all right guys i think that's it if you like the video and you want more you can subscribe and like the videos thank you very much and i'll see you in the next choice bye